This is Rob Tubman for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined. Finally, it's been a while. I'm here with Mr. Anthony Yard, the beast from the east. How are you, mate? Hey, man. <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. Just got back, you know, fresh, fresh home. <laughs> Where have you been? A couple holidays. Went Barbados, went Cyprus. Um, yeah, man. Just enjoying life. Resting up. You look like you're enjoying life. Um, compliment, by the way. <laughs> Been a while. Uh, I haven't seen you since before you went out to Chelyabinsk. First and foremost, I wasn't able to come to your fight because it was my best friend's wedding that day. Congratulations. Tell him say congratulations. <laughs> Hopefully he'll watch this and he'll um, receive the congratulations. But you will be pleased to hear that I did run out of the reception and watch the fight on my phone outside in the smoking area. Um, Came so close against Sergio Kovalev over in Chelyabinsk. You know you've had a little bit of time to rest on it. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are just keep grinding, keep working, keep pushing, keep going against the odds. Um, when I got into boxing, I didn't go into boxing to be mediocre. And um, when you've got them kind of dreams and aspirations, again, it's, it's, it's a difficult task. Um, going out to Russia was a madness, I can't lie. <laughs> it was different. It was different. Um, they lost my luggage. Um, things were just different, you know, different commission running it, etc. People think I'm going to have bad things to say about Russia. Russia treated me well, I can't lie. So I feel like there's a lot of stereotype going around. A lot of people like in my ear saying it's going to be tough, it's going to be this. I've got a good reception over there, I can't lie. I've got a very good reception. Ray Jones is loved over there, loved over there. He was at the fight as well. He was winking at me doing this just before the fight. Um, whole different experience whole different experience, but well, 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 well needed experience. Now, I was one of the people who kind of looked at it and thought, ooh, Russia, because you do hear stories. I mean, it's not dissimilar to what probably people outside of the UK will say about coming to the UK, but still, I was one of those people who did think that. Um, I stopped thinking that the moment I saw your ring walk. Um, <laughs> and I thought, yeah, he, he looks like he's okay. Um, <laughs> What was that like, walking out like that? I mean, because it, it was a huge step up com compared to the opposition you faced, by far the biggest test of your career. But you looked thoroughly at home, not only the ring walk, but early on in the fight. It's, it's, you can't, I can't explain it. I can't describe it. I'm just one of them characters. Um, my characters, it's going to be what it's going to be. You might as well enjoy it. Again, I almost pulled it off. I'm getting like, when I'm walking around and stuff, a lot, of people, a lot more people are recognising me giving me a lot more props than they did before. Um, that's not really what I look for. I look for the win. Again, I'm not one of them, I'm not a liar. I don't lie to myself and say, yeah, it's all right because I've done well. It's not all right because I've done well. I wanted to win the fight. I feel like um, my life would have changed tremendously if I won the fight. It's changed anyway. But again, I'm one of the people that's, I'm a riser. I like to rise to the top like cream. So I'm, I'm just gonna, I've taken it. You know, it's like in boxing, people have, put this thing in their head. People have got the Floyd Mayweather effect. You can't lose, you can't lose, you can't lose. Again, in my mind, I still want to keep that same thing going because if you've got that mentality, you achieve. You achieve what, you know, what everyone's saying you can't achieve. Um, but again, Joshua took his loss. Every, a lot of people turned against him. I heard a lot of people saying things, oh, I knew he was going to lose, oh, he's rubbish. I said, bro, Joshua's a millionaire. <laughs> Joshua was doing a lot for British boxing. I don't know what you're talking about. Someone takes a loss, everyone goes against him. Um, but again, it's when you're out fighting at a certain level, you know, things can happen. But again, I've never been at this level before. I learned a lot from it. The lion is coming back. Believe that. <laughs> you mentioned not being at that level before. How early in the fight did you realise that you were in, in tougher than you'd been in for the rest of your career? Do you know what? Again, this, people are gonna, people are gonna look at this or watch this interview and be like, oh, whatever, man. But I did not feel out of my comfort zone. I did not. Um, I had a game, like, it wasn't really a game plan. It was more of a, a mentality. My mentality was this. I'm not gonna go to Russia and get a decision. I said this in all my interviews before, all the BT sports things and things like that. I said, I didn't hide <laughs> what was in my head. I didn't hide my thought process. My thought process was this. I'm not gonna go to Russia and get a decision. I didn't say when it was going to be, but what I was planning on doing was boxing, later rounds. If Kovalev wants to start trading, we can get it cracking. That's what ended up happening. You know, I started landing body shots. I hurt him. And then when it got to the eighth round, I saw an opportunity. 
So I went for it. <laughs> it's just like life in general. You see an opportunity, you go for it. His experience played a major key, a major role in the fact he stayed on his job. And since he's been with, um, I think it's Buddy McGurk, since he's been with that trainer, he's a different fighter. You know, um, he used his job very well when he was when he was under pressure. And again, it's not only what he done well, it's what I didn't do well. Um, I lost my rug. I hurt him and I said, yeah. I started charging up like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I started loading up on every shot. I wanted to knock him out. Again, and the crowd is everything. It's, a, it's, a, it's an experience I've never had before, but it's a beautiful experience. Obviously, some of the, some of the, um, the thumbnails I'm seeing, <laughs> what people are tagging me in, ain't, ain't, ain't beautiful, but it's a beautiful thing to, to get to this level and know. Not, some people get to this level and they get splattered. Because that's what a lot of people are saying. They're like, oh, you're not ready for that level. You can't just jump up. A lot of people get to this level and they get splattered, but it's a good feeling to get to this level and know you're at this level. There's, there's no way no one can turn around and say, yeah, and, he, and he's not at the world level, or he can't fight at that level, etc. I don't go in there and fight, you know, a world champion that's just turned world champion or as at the end of his reign or anything like that. I wouldn't have thought a world champion who was, again, I don't know too much about his, the facts and the stats of him, but Ring Magazine's um, unified champion, undisputed champion at one point. Um, his record speaks for itself. He's had, what, 17 world title fights. That was my first world title fight. My 18th, my 19th professional fight. That was his 30-something professional fight. Sometimes experience does play a key, but I ain't got, I don't, I don't listen to all that stuff. I just believe in mentality. My mentality is lines in the camp. And it's still lands in the camp. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's a fair point you make. I think from my point of view, I, like a lot of people, saw you in the ring and thought, okay, you look relaxed, you look like you belong, certainly in those early rounds. I, I'm drawn back to you saying something to Tunde in the corner where you said, it's hard. It's hard in there. Um, what I'm, you know, kind of where I was going with that initial question is, how much better was Kovalev than what you'd already faced? How much, how much of a tall, not tall order, but how difficult was it compared to who you've fought so far in your career? Um, just have to just correct what you said. I didn't say it was hard in there. I didn't say it was hard. Tony asked me to do something and I said, that like, it's hard to do what he's oh, telling okay. me to do. Because right. um, when you're in there, sometimes people see stuff from the outside or you know, fans might watch a fight and be like, I had people saying to me, Oh, you should have went to the body earlier. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's just easy. Like, okay, I should have thought of that. But um, what was different with Kovalev was, again, he's, experienced, he's been at that level for a very long time. And again, um, he's been in certain positions before. And he knew how to deal with it. And again, the advice he got in the corner, you know, was good advice for him. And he went back on his job. And again, it was when I'm trying to load up and I'm, I'm swinging, I'm trying to connect or whatever, he keeps popping the jab, and that's what, what they say. Jabs are uh, the best tool in boxing, and again, that's I, I believe that's what played a, um, a big part in the fight. Again, I, 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 hurt, I feel like I hurt him with a left hook. And again, I, I went for it, man. I went for another left hook, lead left hook, and he stuck at the jab, caught me with it, took a deep breath. I went to get up. The referee stopped the fight. I was I, again when because when I watched it back, the camera went straight off of me. <laughs> I tried to get up within. I counted like two, three seconds. The referee put his hand on me and waved it off. But again, the referee done his job. No one, I'm not going to be one of them people that cries and complains about decisions because it was clear who was winning the fight. I see it as this, if it don't go your way, you do better. Don't make excuses, do better. Um, yeah, it was one of them situations, man, you know. I'm not one of the people that go around and start saying, oh yeah, the referee shouldn't have stopped the fight. I'm a lion, I want to go up and done this, done that. <laughs> It's boxing, man. Boxing is a very dangerous sport. The referee's there for a reason. He's done his job, and um, yeah, it's just motivation, man. Yeah, it's very well said. A lot of people do look at uh, opportunities to kind of blame this and blame that, taking it on the chin, so to speak. Um, how much of the knockout was tiredness and exhaustion, and how much was it you being hurt? A hundred percent. Listen, I told everybody from the beginning: don't call me no coward. Don't say I'm running from no one. Don't say. Um, I'm scared to do this, I'm scared to do that. I don't say I'm a liar. I'm not a liar. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> All it was was, look, boom. I hurt him with a shot. I saw my opportunity. Everyone's, the whole eighth round, I was punching up Kovalev. The whole eighth round. That's three minutes after having a fight already. Um, the ninth round, I was still all right. I felt all right, I felt good. But again, even when I was hurting him, he was still popping me with jabs. 
he was still hitting me and he covid has got a hard job mm. um he was still popping me with jobs so i was walking into jobs etc and then temp fry came i was like oh what's this <laughs> i said i felt this before in training lines in the camp so i kept coming forward kept dipping kept slipping kept throwing punches but he stayed in his job done his job well and then um yeah i think like yeah when it got to the 11th round <laughs> My leg said, yeah, and you're a bit tired now. You better do something different. And then again, I hit him with a big shot. He kind of like, it was like a check kind of left foot kind of thing. And then I went for another left foot. He stuck at his jab. I basically jumped into the punch. Went on the floor. I said, yeah, like, I know what this tired feeling. Took a couple of deep breaths. The fight got stopped. End the story. Um, the way I see it is this. I'm not going to cry and complain or blame nobody. My, my, my thing is this. If I didn't get hit with a jab, <laughs> If I didn't make the mistakes, if I didn't get if I didn't get tired or if I didn't exhaust myself, then I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been on the floor. The fight wouldn't have got stopped. Um, you know, the way I see things is this. If I pulled off that eight round, <laughs> I'll be a hero. Um ten days advice would have been um I don't even know if this is a word, heroic. <laughs> I'm heroic? Heroic. Heroic, there we go. His advice would have been, you know, second to none if I pulled it off. But again, this is just boxing. This is just, this is just life. When it don't go your way, there's a lot of critics. Mention Tundi's advice in the corner. Much has been made about that after the fight. I think, I know you well enough to know. No, Tundi well enough to know that you would have probably expected after the fight, if things didn't go your well, people would have been picking holes in, in what people are saying. Empty the tank. Talk to me about empty the tank. Do you know what? Again, me and Tundi, we spoke about this, and um, none of us have been at that level before. That's it. And so I'm not going to start criticising Tunde and say, you know, it's bad advice or anything like that. It's just bad choice of wording. That's all it is. Um, as I said before, if I pulled it off, <laughs> Tunde, everyone would be like, oh, yeah, but that little bald black head, of, he's a genius. That's what everyone says, that little bald black, black head of his. There's some geniusness in there, but it didn't go my way. And again, after, even after the fight, I was like, what kind of advice, what, like, what, what, was, what was you doing? Since, whenever you ever told me I'm to my tank, he goes, Ant, I was just in a mode and I was trying to hack. Like, he goes, I don't know why I said that. Again, he took, he, took what he, he took his mistakes, I took my mistakes, and we grow. That's just life in general. Some people can't take criticism. I can. I criticise myself before anybody criticises me. Um, I know as well, when I, when I hurt Kovalev, I know what I should have been doing. Stay relaxed like I always do. Pop my shots. Land the good clean shots, but I lost my rag. I turned Dragon Ball Z, started doing haymakers, <laughs> put my head down, started swinging, telegraphing punches. But um, that's part of everything, part of being exhausted, part of wanting to, you know, my family's there at the side. I'm in Russia, I'm like, if I, or when I do this, this is my mentality. I still, like, I was still saying when, when I pull this off, my life changes forever. So when you're in there and you're, uh, and you're loading up, Again, sometimes you make mistakes, you do the wrong things. What I should do was stay relaxed and pick my shots. Because again, being in there, I, from the first run, I knew I should have been in there. I knew I wasn't at class. Kovalev even said it. My IQ surprised mm. him. He's been at this level for a long time. Um, and the only other time he's been in trouble like that is against Andre Wood. The only other time, and it, again, even with the fight he lost against Andre Wood, um, I think on put, he was winning before he got stopped. The other fight, which he lost against Andre Wood by points, a lot of people, it was controversial. But again, I, I had covered it. I had um, Andre Wood beating him both times. And um, the other, only other fight was again Alvarez, which you could say he took his foot off the pedal, underestimated him, but then come back and outbox him under Body McGurk. And since he's been with Body McGurk, he's been a different fighter, 100%. Now I caught up with Andre Ward, I think a week or two after the fight. It was very complimentary about your performance. It said that you said that you you know you showed that you really belonged at that level, but he did say that you haven't shown that you can beat the guys at that level yet. What do you think that you need to change, or if anything, you feel you need to change moving forward to prove that you can not only compete with somebody like Sergey Kovalev, who is one of the best light heavyweights of the past decade, but beat somebody like that? Just keep doing what I'm doing. There's a lot of criticism. I, 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 it, it, it baffles me where. I know, obviously, um, Andre Wood was, he was a bit ticked off at some of the things Tony was saying, but Tony was meant to say them things. Um, Andre Wood's a legend. He's done what he's done. Retired undefeated. Um, again, I was a f I'm still a fan of Andre Wood. He's boxing. I watch him. Um, 
and his skill set again, what he'd done to someone like Chad Dawson. Mm. Andre Wood was like his second turn, he was a fantastic boxer, fantastic amateur background. That's what people that's what people fail to mm. <laughs> they fail to take that in. I had no amateur experience. So where I'm going in there with this mentality of I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do that, I'm going in there with just with a mentality. A mentality and hard work. I'm in the gym every day working hard. And if I can do that, if I can perform like that against Kovalev with all this critic, all this criticism, uh, he don't spar hard people, he don't bash his brains in and sparring in the gym, um, that pad work don't work, you know, he's not training hard enough, he needs to work on his fitness. People get to that level and freeze. Don't tell me about my fitness, don't tell me about my skill set, don't tell me about nothing because I'm doing well. I want to keep doing well. And the motivation that's come from this is, is different. It's different. So keep criticizing. The people that support and keep supporting. And it's always going to be love when this lands in the camp. <laughs> Do you think it's fair to say that you would have learned more from that loss to Sergo Kovalev than you would have, I think you were what, you were 16 and 0 going into that fight? Oh, 18. 18 and 0, beg your pardon. Um, you were 18 and 0 going in, into that fight. Do you think you learned more from the loss than you did from the 18 wins? Do you know what? No. Everyone has different opinions of things. I just, I just like to see things different. Um, everyone's saying, yeah, I'm going to take a lot from that fight. I did take a lot from that fight, but there's nothing like winning. <laughs> there's nothing like winning. I won't, I won't fall into that thing of, yeah, um, you know, learning a lot from your loss or whatever. I learned a lot from my wins as well. You know, I learned how to knock people out. I got better at knocking people out. Um, I learned how to not get hit. I got better at not getting hit. Um, the thing I would take from this fight with Kovalev is being at that stage. Um, confidence in terms of being in there with someone, you know, who's feared in the sport or was at one point one of the most feared pe people in the division. Um, going out there and performing how I did. And again, the diff I could look, look this, this is my personality and this is my mentality. Had the fight ended, I would prefer that because I know I gave it everything. I, in the eighth round, I gave it everything. The ninth round, I was blowing, but I still gave everything. Tenth round, same thing. If I, if after that eighth round or ninth round, I started feeling tired, and I started saying, "No, I'm blowing now. Let me start boxing." And I saw about the rounds, I would have been so disappointed in myself. Mm. That's just my mentality. If you're gonna go for something, go for it. <laughs> That's just my mentality. I could have seen that the fight probably. If I just start, because again, my defense. When, only time I was really getting hit was when I was putting my head down and swinging. Other than that, it was more, I was getting hit with jabs, yeah, but it's boxing. But I could have seen out the fight. I could have just, you know, skipped and dipped and whatever, seen out the 12 rounds, lost some decision, uh, been upset, I didn't give it all. But I'd rather go for it. Do you get what I'm saying? That's just my mentality. Some people are gonna disagree. <laughs> some people are gonna say, yeah, but that's a, um, a loss on your record and it will show that you, got, you lost by knockout, whatever. I don't care, it's still a loss. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather go for something. I'd rather go for it. And then if it comes off, you know what you're capable of. If it don't come off, you've got to work harder. Yeah, leave it all in the ring. Yeah, absolutely. Um, often when a fighter, certainly after a first loss, but often after, after a loss, a fighter will look at various aspects of their team, whether it be promoter, trainer, nutritionist, whoever, and make changes. Have you had a look at that? Are you going to make changes? Are you not going to make changes? Um, let's wait and see. <laughs> no, everyone, listen, a lot of people that just, I don't know what, what's wrong with them. A lot of people that just, you know, want, want their input or want me to do things a certain way are going to want, want to make changes. But I just see it as this, sharpen up what you're doing. I will, obviously, I'm always making changes. Don't, do not get it twisted in any, any way, shape or form. Every single time I'm in a boxing ring, I'll make a change. Every single fight I had, all the 18 wins I had, I made changes. Um, because I believe in adapting. I'll, I'll study and I'll watch Floyd Mayweather as much as I can. Because he, again, he, in terms of the sport of boxing, he's perfection. Hit and don't get hit. Perfect um, boxing record. And again, the style. You, you want to last long in the sport. Um, I will make changes. I know I need to make changes. I've been making changes since I started boxing. There's things I need to work on. It's called progression. It's called paying attention to what you're doing, attention to detail, trying to progress, trying to get better every single day. So I'm always making changes. People have a lot of, a lot of criticism about that, like, sparring and things like that. Keep letting Tony when you look up. <laughs> the one thing I can confirm 
I don't believe in consistently having wars in the gym. I just don't believe in it. I don't think it makes sense. Um, some people are recovering from their sparring going into their fight. I've seen it happen so many times. Um, and I don't, think, I, don't feel you, I don't feel you learn how to box like that. You learn how to fight. I can already fight. I've shown that so many times. But again, I want to perfect my boxing skills, get better at boxing, keep demonstrating, keep motivating where I come from, people, other people around the world as well. Um, that you can do something. You don't need to go into a knife crime and go into this drug stuff and think that you're your your character and power or top boy. Just live your normal life and go for something. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, yeah, man. That we don't get weak, we get deep. Turn up, show up, block. Lions in the camp. <laughs> Uh, last one on Tunde. You mentioned Tunde kind of winding people up, and I know that kind of, he he does like to play kind of the panto villain at times. <laughs> this is the first time I've heard from you since the fight. Yeah. Um. In just any kind of interview, it's not the first time we've heard from Tunde. Tunde's been out there, and yeah, Tunde's yeah. been kind of saying his piece and what have you. Does that not affect you? Because I know it won't affect you. But what do you make of that? The fact that you've kind of been so quiet about things post fight, and he's kind of still been out there shouting from the <laughs> rooftop. So is that just one of those things? <laughs> Tunde just got to be Tunde. That's all. It's like, I, the way I grew up was this. Everyone, everyone's different, but the way I grew up was this year. I had a boy, one of my closest friends. One of my closest friends, he was so hyperactive. He was so on beef. He wanted to be a gangster so bad. He just wanted to, he was a troublemaker. He just had troubleness in his blood. I was always calm. I was always, ah, if, if, if problems come my way, I'm going to defend myself. I don't go looking for trouble. Try and get away from trouble. Try and get some money in your pocket. Look after your family. That was always my mentality. Um, if someone violates you, you demonstrate. But you don't go looking for trouble. Now, Tunde is Tunde. I'm not saying he's a troublemaker. I'm not saying all these things. Tunde, is a, he can, at times, he can be the most professional person I've ever seen in my life. But he's got his way of doing things. I'm not his dad. He's not my dad. I'm not going to tell him what to do. He's not going to tell me what to do. We can only advise each other and say, oh, Unc, I don't think you should do that. Or he can say, Aunt. I think you should go with this way about doing things. One common goal we've got here is, is greatness, trying to be great. Um, and I'm not going to tell Tony what to do. If he wants to talk and say whatever, he can say whatever. But one thing I always tell people not to do, don't make us one person. Tony is Tony, Anthony is Anthony, and we work fantastically together. That's what it is, and we've got love for each other. And... The people that know Tony know that his heart is made of gold. Mm. Literally, if you, if you sit down, if you know him, you know his heart's made of gold and he's just trying to make something of his life. Everyone goes different ways about it. Floyd Mayweather, Adrian Broner, who are big talkers. And then you've got, you know, your Edward Spencers, you've got, um, who's another? <laughs> who's another um, humble warrior? You've got your Anthony Joshua, you know, who, you know, silent assassin. I'm just like, I'm in between, I'm just myself, I'm Anthony Yard. If you piss me off, I'm going to react sometimes. <laughs> depends, depends how um, smart I'm being at the time. Um, sometimes I'm calm, sometimes I'm cool. Sometimes I'm hyper, sometimes I want to joke and laugh. Sometimes I'm just not in a flipping mood. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to always be myself. Everyone around me, I hope they can be themselves as well. And we just enjoy life. Keep motivating, keep demonstrating, <laughs> and keep elevating. <laughs> So what's the future like for Anthony Yard? When can we expect to see you back in the ring? The future is magnificent. If you've been a part of the journey so far, if you haven't just jumped on a bandwagon, <laughs> if you've been a part of the journey and the, and the procedure, you know that nothing came easy, man. We worked. We worked extremely hard. We're going to keep working extremely hard. Um, I'll probably... I don't know when I'm going to fight next yet. Of course I'm going to be back in the ring, tearing it up. Um, again, I'm going to have a few meetings. Decide where the next fight's, the next fight's going to be, who it's going to be, and um, go from there. But it's lions in the camp. It's going to stay lions in the camp. And anyone that's got that lion mentality, you're going to be lions in the camp as well. <laughs> lions in the camp. <laughs> Just quickly, um, I, I'm conv I don't know, you won't care, but I don't know where your next fight or what level your next fight would be. You just challenged for a world title. You came within inches of winning a world title. So you're kind of now in that in-between level. Are you now open to a, to a British showdown with, with somebody from these shores? I mean, Josh Boatsy's name will always be thrown up with you. 
what kind of level of opponent are you looking to go straight back into world titles European level what's the plan we have to wait and see oh you're keeping it real real close <laughs> I'm, just keep, I'm just keeping it real full stop <laughs> we have to wait and see um I'm, a, I'm just literally, I keep shouting Lions because Lions got no, they got no choice. They got no options. They got like, they're limited in options. They have to go and hunt. And the way I see it is this. I'm like, I've got a picture where it's half me, half Lion. I'm half Lion, but I'm also, I'm also me as well. And I'm smart. I try to be smart. And boxing, it's a, it's a sport, but it's a business as well. And um, I try to stick more to the sport side, the aggression side, but when things are said to me, they make sense. It makes sense. It's about getting to the top, staying at the top, and um, making the most of your life. And um, whatever fight's put in front of me, I will not say no. <laughs> I have not said no yet. When Kovalev was put to me, a lot of people were like, oh, he's good. even up until two days before the fight, people were saying, Anthony's going to pull out. Just like, you, me or you? <laughs> me or you's going to pull out? Because I ain't pulling out. Um, yeah, we're just going to wait and see, man. I'm excited as well to get back in the ring. Trust me, my fingers are itching. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're excited to see you back in the ring too, whenever that is, and whoever it's against, I'm sure people will be tuning in. Um, finally, I'm going to be in Las Vegas next week to see your old friend, Sergei Kovalev, yes. um, against Canelo Alvarez. How do you see that fight going? Do you know what? I think that's a good fight, you know. I can't lie, I think it's a good fight. Um, I've been in there with Kovalev. I know his weaknesses. Um, I know his strengths. I've seen Canelo. For a long time, I rate Canelo very highly. Big size difference. Um, I don't know. I'll go with Canelo, just due to, you know, the complete fighter I think he is, and how much he lost from he, he, how much he learned from his loss against Floyd. Um, again, this is another thing as well. This is, Canelo, I've always liked him. He's someone that motivates me. He wasn't happy with his loss to um, Floyd Mayweather. He was not happy about it. But how he came back showed who he was, you know what I'm saying? Um, and the way I see it is this, he's grown and he's a different kind of fighter. So, I'll probably go with Canelo. I don't choose sides, but I'll probably go with Canelo. Um, Kovalev can bang, he's a good boxer as well when he stays on his job. Um, it's a good fight, man. I'll be watching anyway. You know, usually I, I, sometimes I'm, on a Saturday night, I like to probably watch movies or whatever. And it's a bit, but I'll watch that fight. It's going to be entertaining. Seems to me like people are kind of oversimplifying it for Canelo and saying, like, oh, well, I'll just get close and hit him to the body, like you said earlier, like, like he never thought of that. But it's not going to be as easy as that, is it? It's not going to be that easy. Um, Canelo has made things look easy before. He's made things look hard before. But that's why it's such an interesting matchup. I'm actually interested in seeing this fight because Canelo is small compared to him. I've stood next to Canelo and Canelo looked tiny. Tiny. Um, so, I don't know, it's going to be interesting, man. Canelo is, again, he's a good combination puncher. He's very, very experienced. Um, more experienced than Kovalev. Will the size play, a, a, um, play like have an effect? Could do. But it could work in Canelo's favour. If he can get past the jab and work them body shots and come with the combinations. I think it's going to be an interesting fight, man. <laughs> That's where I have to leave it. It's going to be an interesting fight. Well, we look forward to it. Um, one more question. How's Champ? When was the last time you spoke to Champ? I know Champ's been around and here. Have you seen him since you got back from Russia? I've seen Champ. I've seen Champ. Um, he was in the gym. I went to the gym. I didn't train. This is like, I think it was like two weeks after the fight. Mm. I went to the gym because um, I was training. Like, I was training in another gym a couple of times. But I went to the gym and I saw Champ. I spoke to his dad. Um, and yeah, man, the link up's due. The link up's due. Obviously, I've been in literally. I've been in my own little, my little mind frame. I just with boxing, other boxers don't know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you need to zone out to zone in. Do you get what I'm saying? You need to zone out to zone in. So I had my holiday. I went to Barbados. You know, my homeland. You know, I'm half Beijing, half Jamaican. Well, I'm British, but I'm talking about my parents. And <laughs> but um, yeah, I went back to Barbados. I went to Cyprus, enjoy some sunshine. You know, the tan the tan's diluting now. <laughs> but when I come back I was a little brown and I was brown. But it's getting now because I'm back in the cold river. But yeah, it was good. But back to work. Back to work. Okay. Well, Mr. Anthony Yard, as always, a real pleasure catching up with you. Thanks very much for making time for me and Boxing Social. Again, very sorry I couldn't have been out there in Russia. Good, good, good.
Um, but yeah, thanks very much for making time for me. I look forward to catching up with you soon and get back in the ring. Gotta do the sound like you know what I said. Boxing social. Lions in the camp. Aware. Go rub behind the mic. <laughs> behind the camera, so I'm behind the mic. It's Lions in the camp. Stay tuned. I'll be back soon. Like you never knew. <laughs> I can still be a goon. <laughs> never a cartoon. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Lions in the camp. <laughs> to the yard, thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social.